Mm. Look at those fingers fly. That, everyone, was Will Daniels, musician and music teacher at Kepler. So, welcome, Will. Hello. We're really glad to have you here. Uh, you're from Central Florida, or at least you live in Central Florida. That's right. Yeah, I pretty and much grew up here too. Okay. Yeah. There's a. Uh, you know, there there are several people kind of in the in the Kepler universe that have connections to Central Florida. Uh, but I think you're the first one I've met who actually is is, is still there and really establishing uh, establish, establishing himself there. And I've I've been you know, interested to see in your in your profile all the musical stuff that you're up to. Uh, that performance was that in Central Florida. That was that was for uh, my master's recital at UCF just a couple of years ago. Okay, so. They, you know, UCF is in Orlando. Um, you're up to a whole lot of stuff right now, musically. Uh, maybe you could talk about some of the stuff you're up to and, um, you know, as particularly maybe kind of aiming at at the teaching that you're, that you're doing now. Sure, yeah, I wouldn't say I'm up to a whole lot of stuff, but it is sort of- um, It impressed me. A lot of know? different things. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, just kind of as a musician, you have to have you know, multiple, multiple streams of things that you're doing. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'll be performing, um, be, and then during the school year, I'm doing a lot of accompanying for music students at the University of Central Florida and around town. Um, and so that requires, you know, recitals and rehearsals with them. Um, and then also doing piano work for the Geneva School, a classical Christian school. So I'm, I'll show up for chapel services and their high school choir, and I'll play for my church. Um, there's other, there's a venue called the Timucua Arts Foundation. And so they do a lot of chamber music there. Um, it's a great place just to, to perform. And so I'll do some recitals there. And uh, they also have the Alterity Chamber Orchestra. And, um, and then on the, teaching side, I have my own private studio where I teach piano lessons, and that's mostly online right now, so I've been doing that since March. Um, so I have several piano students, and I also teach with a school in the area called the Avalon School of Music, and so kind of splitting up between those two locations. Okay, so as a musician, you don't have a lot of balls in the air, but as a regular human, you, you would. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot to put to, to keep track of for sure. Yeah, well, very cool. And now, uh, you know, I I want to hear about your family uh, and and some of your education and training as well before we kind of get into your philosophy of teaching and your classes. Oh sure, yeah. Um, so I got married about 2015, and we have two kids right now. One is. Well, he just turned four, and the other one is about to turn two. Uh, they are just a ton of fun to play with and getting a lot more time with them at home right now, which is a, just a ton of fun. Um, and I got my undergrad at the Florida State University and actually went in as a jazz pianist. And kind of through high school and, and middle school, I was – balancing, doing jazz piano, classical piano. I never really uh, necessarily gave one up for the other. Um, and so, but then I, I think I, I wanted to pursue jazz piano at, at Florida State University and then eventually switched over to music theory and composition instead. So it seemed like a good, um, a good opportunity to kind of weave in together uh, all the different styles that I was interested in. Um, and then after a couple of years of just teaching piano lessons, I decided to get my uh, master of music degree at the University of Central Florida. Um, again, kind of touch, uh, was able to weave in together a lot of uh, classical piano and some jazz piano and even uh, jazz composition. Um, so yeah, that's my musical training. Yeah, and I, you are currently a, a composer, you compose. Somewhat. I, I don't actually get a, a, the amount of time that I want to to do that. Uh, if I had more time, I'd definitely be spending more time composing. But yeah, every you know every now and then I'll get 
some more time in whatever season I'm in to compose things. So yeah, for sure. Wonderful. Now, I'd like to encourage our, our audience, those of you who are viewing, uh, you're very welcome uh, to ask questions about being a musician, about the music teacher life, um, and to interact with us as, as we go along. So feel very free to post comments and questions. Uh, you, uh, you comment in your teacher profile that you end each day uh, in family worship. And of course, you know, that's something that, that uh, any Christian family can do, uh, and it's going to look different for each family. But you know, as the sort of musician that you are, um, one becomes curious about what that looks like. It um, well, it's simply you know we we begin with a very we have a very basic outline. We, we pray, we read a short portion of scripture, and then we pray again, and then we sing. And it's um, you know we were for a while singing various hymns from night to night, and and now we because our, our children are, are now finally singing with us. They, before they would just kind of sit there while me and my wife would sing. And yeah. uh, I think they've, they've gotten more comfortable with singing, uh, which is just makes it so much sweeter and enjoyable. Uh, so we've pretty much been singing the doxology every night uh, because that's what they asked for. Um, but yeah, we're just, we'll sit in their bedroom. Um, I'm not even playing piano like I originally thought I would be more often, but we just sing and that's it. Boom. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so really j just like any other family sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I, I reading through your profile through your description of the classes, you know, the, the way you, you talk about music um, is, is particularly purposeful and directed. In fact, you use the word telos in uh, your, in your, in your course description. Uh, the course for those of you who are watching, it's a semester long course being offered this fall called Music Theory, Analysis, and Composition. Maybe you, uh, I mean, I know this is huge. Like we could just go for a couple hours on this, but uh, yeah. <laughs> let's talk about the telos of music. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I, I wanted to use that term uh, telos instead of just simply calling it the end. You know, it could be described as the end of music. Um, it, it, unless you actually are familiar with that term, you would think the end of music, like what is the end of music, like it's ending, but that's not what I intend. So the telos, what is intended for, um, you know, it's it's like the the Westminster uh, question, uh, catechism question, what is the chief end of man? Uh, to mm -hmm. glorify God and enjoy him forever. And I apply that to music very intimately, that uh, the chief end of music is to glorify God and to enjoy him. Um, through that music, I think. And so I think that is a very fitting um, mindset and philosophy to have about just about anything, but music has a very unique role in our lives as glorifying God and in giving us an opportunity just to en enjoy him, enjoy his beauty, um, enjoy the, um, enjoy music for what it is as it illuminates God's glory to us. Mm. Now, philosophically, um, you know, that I, I buy that. And I think it would be pretty easy to take a Kepler student and, and, and just say that and for them to, to, to acquiesce, right? Like, yeah, that, that, that's right. Um, but, but how, does, how does your class uh, empower the student to, to move toward, to follow that telos? Yeah, it's a very good question. I think... Um... It definitely isn't an easy, there's there's not a formula for, for doing that. Um, one thing that I like to do is to go to um, exemplars. So Johann Sebastian Bach is my favorite exemplar of this, this attitude of being uh, very much intentional about music glorifying God. Um, and then his music actually glorifying God and not himself necessarily. I think afterwards, uh, classical composers, especially with Beethoven, uh, the music became more about the composer and his unique contribution to the music rather than the music itself mm. glorifying God. And I think Bach on the back of every one of his pieces or many of them, not every one of them, he would write the initials SDG, which means solo Deo Gloria. Um, 
and meaning for the glory of God alone. That was his intention behind every piece of music that he wrote. And we could just see from his writings and the scholarship being done on, on him that his, um, the worldview and the mindset for him and even during that period was different. It was mm -hmm. um, music had a sort of an objective understood uh, set of laws um, that it followed. And this, this set of laws was embedded within nature and within God's created order um, rather than uh, simply or primarily out of the creativity of the composer. And so it, it creates this uh, shift in perspective that um, I think a lot of people and especially young artists like myself, when, especially when I was younger, um, we are trying to make our mark in this world. And we try to create music or, or to get to a certain point in our musicianship where we are uh, just wowing people or we create something completely different than what's been created before uh, so that people can look to us and, and say, that is an amazing musician. And that's not what we want our music. That's not the purpose that we want our music to serve if the chief end is to glorify God. And so what I want to teach my students is um, to start with the mindset that Bach had, which was to not be afraid to simply repeat things, ordinary ideas. I think that was the interesting thing is that Bach um, would, repeat, would repeat folk songs and, and things that he'd, he'd heard before. And he viewed his purpose, his role, not so much to come up with something new, but to use that, use um, use music that was available to him and and frame it in such a way to craft it in such a way that was very beautiful and that that uh and he almost like to clean it up and to orchestrate it for instruments um and harmonize them together in a very rational god uh, glorifying way yeah well you know there, there's you know there's a sense in which you know well you talk about you know the glory of God and, and making something you know, and the, the temptation that musicians and composers may have to kind of you know exalt themselves so to kind of their their ambition is even if they're trying to suppress it right they want to amaze the people right but you know that's I think it's a temptation common to artists of every ilk and it's a temptation common to humans right. So I kind of love the idea that in a music theory course, you know, one of the big philosophical things you would be grappling with would be, you know, would be that definition of excellence and what things are for. If you're making something for the glory of God instead of for its own sake, or well, I shouldn't even say for its own sake, but, you know, you know, it's making something the best so that you look the best. I mean, that's a very different thing. And, and, and poets and, and painters and carpenters um, are, are as I think is likely to fall prey to that as 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 a musician, but it does raise a question that I I, I was I wanted to bring up when I was you know, preparing for this live. You have a publication in an unexpected journal uh, called "The Function of Absolute Music for Religious and Non-Religious Minds." You brought up Bach. Uh, the article kind of revolves around around Bach, uh, and there there was a statement in here that um, I, I would just love to hear you unpack. Um, so there's a third category. You were speaking of other categories of music. I'm quoting now from the article. There's a category of musical communication that Bach is well known for, what is commonly called absolute music. Essentially, this means that the music is its own subject, not pointing elsewhere for meaning, not containing symbolic references, nor having any kind of narrative, except that which is developed purely in terms of the music itself. Um, so I'd actually love to hear you unpack how the sort of self-reference, if that's fair, um, w within music might be a good thing if 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 all music and, and all the things we do are supposed to be soli deo gloria, um, then, then how does absolute music work as a good thing? Yeah, that's a fair question. And I wouldn't go so far as to say that absolute music is kind of the the height of, of musical genres that this is the most God glorifying uh, approach to music by definition. I wouldn't say that, but it's, it is a good, um, it's something to, to reflect on it. I think that it relates to that. Maybe, so, maybe we could 
define absolute music first. Actually, I should I should have you know done that from your from your piece. But could you define absolute music for us? Right. Sure. Um, so it's I think you know it's kind of embedded in, in what I said that it's um, it's not externally referential. Mm -hmm. It's not um, you know a lot of people when they a lot of composers when they introduce their piece they say oh this is about uh, my time last summer and you know my vacation and I was just looking at the beauty around me and and I saw this mountain and so the, there's this moment in the piece where I, I see the mountain so um, there's kind of these very objective concrete uh, things and experiences that the music is trying to emulate and reflect and so that would be more what's called programmatic music mm -hmm. um, or even symbolic music uh, and so this absolute music is, or and it's also called abstract music, is where it's not concrete, it's abstract. It's um, the music is not referencing any particular concrete experience, but it is simply the the musical activity itself for its own end. Like it's it it is the the concrete experience. The music itself is the concrete experience which we are impacted by and that we find interesting. So you're not trying to reflect the beauty of the mountain. You're trying to show the beauty of the music itself. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, so then, you know, how, how does that glorify God more or how does it glorify God? I should say without comparing. I think it, um, God has has definitely um, given music. A, I think this is what I'm kind of arguing for in the music itself, in the the article that I wrote, is mm -hmm. that music has a unique place in His world for us. So throughout Scripture, we are instructed to be, you know, making music in our hearts, to be using uh, instruments to to praise God, um, to be singing. And he and furthermore, we just know from psychoacoustics that our, our ears and cognitive capabilities are specially trained to process music or specially created to process music um, in a coherent way as a as a unique sort of language and, and medium of communication and um, and generating emotional experiences and, and things. All of that is we everyone universally knows that music is a sort of human universal. Um, and so when, since that is something that God has, has placed in our lives and has instructed us to, um, it has described our worship of him and praise of him in musical terms, mm -hmm. glorifying him, and, and worshiping and glorifying him is um, a, a musical kind of experience. I wanted to get at exactly what is music. You know, if we take music absolutely, that must be the thing at the heart abstractly of what glorifying God is. I, it's mm -hmm. That's probably not the best way to word it, but um, I wanted to strip away from music all the extra things that could be added into it. If we could look at it from that perspective, you know, well, even the words and and other symbolic things that you could attach to music. But what right. if we strip that away? Then we get at what music at its core is. And I yeah. think music at its core glorifies God. Well, you know, and I, I think that you know, there's a sort of irony. Um, for a lot of Christian fine artists where, you know, that you, they are so concerned with, with being able to show a practical, um, for worship, uh, in, in their work that they, I think sometimes focus, uh, on, on people, uh, more than on God. And so the idea of saying, you know, look, God, what I made you, this thing that is, truth, beauty, and goodness, or at least that's the hope, right? Just a small thing that I made. What is it? Oh, it's, it's beauty, right? And that's, that's all it is. You know, I, I, th th I think that there actually needs to be that, that Christian artist 
need to be more self-consciously fine artists and be creating beauty for the sake of beauty and truth for the sake of truth and offering those things up to God without losing sight of, hey, you know what? We uh, we put together this choral piece for the people of God to use and we're going to train our congregation to sing well. All those things are important. But, you know, also just having this sort of fine arts ethos of, you know, beauty, uh, beauty just for God's sake, right? Beauty for itself. Mm -hmm. uh, Cooper Simon comments on art as a subject of art. We have plenty of writers who write about writing and we have groundbreaking filmmakers like Giga Vertov who make movies about making movies and give us a whole lot of important innovations in film. Well, Jared Ritchie has a question for you. William, what level of training or music experience should an interested student have to get the most out of this course? Is there a threshold of knowledge and experience for the student who is interested in taking this music theory and composition course? There, on the one hand, there's there's no threshold. It's it's designed to be an entry level course. I'm intending it to be a a very general. Um, I think all students uh, who are trying to get a liberal arts education need to know something about music, and so this is designed for all students and to be entry level and to at least get a very robust uh, introduction into understanding music. Um, on the other hand, you know, having musical experience, you know, would definitely help, um, but you don't need it. I, I'm going to be trying to walk you through the basics and teaching you, you know, how to read basic notes on the staff, but we will definitely be getting into deeper things for experienced musicians. Um, experienced musicians often have only received a practical uh, instruction mm. into their instrument. And so I want to give them uh, a deeper understanding uh, behind music universally, not just for their instrument. Um, I think this brings up, uh, you know, one of the things you emphasize in your course description is the importance of Socratic dialogue. And it almost seems like your course revolves around conversation. Uh, so maybe you could talk about the structure of your class, particularly from that angle. Sure, yeah. So what I'll be doing is is pre-recording a lecture, um, laying out the concepts of the music, describing it, giving examples, et cetera. Um, the, the in-class meeting will be, you know, not only Socratic discussion, but also, you know, trying to workshop as we need to. It'll be, it'll be somewhat flexible from week to week, depending on, on what we're talking about. Um, but especially with music theory, there needs to be a lot of discussion to make sure that everyone really grasps it, especially you know, from my experience teaching music theory. It's such a foreign concept. Uh, all the, the details of music theory is such a foreign, almost confusing, uh, concept to people. So um, I want to be talking with each individual student to make sure that they can not only understand it, but also reflect on it and to, to articulate what their understanding is, how to relate it to their own experiences and understanding of music. And, um, and then furthermore, to be able to look at new music and for everyone in the class to be able to discuss their observations. Um, so I'm going to be teaching them the basic building blocks of what music is, what music is made up of. And then they're going to, and that's going to be mostly what the music theory portion is. Then the analysis portion is going to be, they will need to piece that together in new music and see those objects and how they come together um, and, and say something within the music or what it's saying. And so, yeah, there's going to be a lot of discussing that in, I'll be instructing the students the, the process of how you analyze music, um, which can, is an art in itself. Mm. Yeah, you know, when my wife was in college, actually at the University of Florida, she, uh, she took a music theory class and it was a class of 200 people. Um, and, you know, of course there was no conversation. Uh, you know, it was basically you had to memorize multiple choice answers. And yeah, sure, you, you listened to some pieces and you might, you know, try to describe them. Uh, but, but the benefit that that had for her, her life was, was minimal to nil, right? But, you know, the idea of, of being able to actually, you know, to, to, to have not, not just, uh, you know, fill out these answers, but, you know, maximum class size, 12 students, 
and and we're gonna not just study this and be exposed to the ideas we're gonna grind them out together and we're gonna talk them out and we're gonna float stuff up and knock it down and we're just gonna really engage you know i i, I love that you know like picturing that pictures me being changed by a class like this so i, I hope that's what happens i expect uh, that's what will happen me too yeah <laughs> now, though, your course objectives are read and write basic music notation, uh, understand and discuss. Uh, I love that you have discuss in here. So understand and discuss the mathematical foundation of harmony and rhythm, uh, the nature of melody, uh, basic skills in identifying musical objects and their significance, uh, create original compositions, broaden musical horizons through exposure to music, to great music, develop a significant appreciation of the role music has in society, and then activate and integrate all of one's intellectual faculties while engaging with music. I wanna talk particularly about that last one um, and, and, and about creating original compositions. Uh, but let's do that last one first. Activate and integrate all of one's intellectual faculties while engaging with music. Um, easily said, uh, so yeah, so what, what, what does it mean? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. Um, it, well, first of all, it, there's a lot of you know, videos, articles, research out there just showing the, the all encompassing nature of, um, for people who actually are performing and engaging in music, um, pretty much every part of your brain is involved in that. Um, and then even for the listener, of music, there are so many different levels in understanding the music. There is the sort of visceral level of just feeling the beat, feeling the harmonic changes and the swelling in the in the volume. That's that we that's one level, and then the the other level is um, really kind of remembering and keeping track of of how the the piece is developing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and comparing different parts of the narrative of the musical narrative to other parts. Um, and then there's understanding the historic context of what you're, of what you're listening to, or even the stylistic context, you know, is this from the classical period of the, of the 1800s, or is this, uh, the romantic style, which has a completely different instrumentation and how the music relates to the style period, uh, affects your interpretation of the piece itself. Um, you know, th certain things are much more dramatic in one period than it would be in another period. And so you, you come to understand that from a historical perspective. And, um, and then finally, having sort of the, the top level uh, philosophical understanding of what does this mean and how does this affect my life? What, um, how does this glorify God's attributes of, of beauty and, and how does this, or, and even what story is this telling? Is it, is it a good story? Is it um, something that's not good for people to really be engaging in? Cause there are some, there's some pieces of music that are, are bad for us in a sense. And there's some pieces that, that are good and we need to, we can't just simply be like, I don't like that style. Um, or I think that's the devil's music. Uh, it, we need to bring all of those other underneath layers together to understand this is disordered music and not ordered music, or this music um, makes a farce of God's attributes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, all it, it's, it's very interesting to me, just bringing every layer together, mathematics, um, logic even you have to create logical coherent thoughts and in, in thinking through and articulating your understanding of the music um various aspects of humanities you're bringing together um yeah, yeah. this is the kind of class that can be <laughs> changing because you know you're never gonna you know 20 years after taking the class you'll you'll turn on the radio and have thoughts you would never have had, right? If you hadn't, if you hadn't engaged in this sort of study, you know. So I love that idea of how enriching and, and life changing something like this could be. Now, you 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 say uh, that uh, one of the course objectives is to create original compositions. Are you trying to make composers of us all? Like, what does that look like? <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, I mean, that is, it's a crucial part of of even just general musicianship that. Uh, you don't want to simply play what's put in front of you. You want to be able to 
uh, create music out of out of your knowledge and your your tools that you've learned of what music is made of. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think it's a very important part of the learning process to actually be writing music. Just like in order to learn language, you need to be speaking yourself. So in order to learn the language of music, you need to be able to speak the language of music. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that makes all the sense in the world. And I, I love that you use, you know, uh, uh, you compared it to learning language because I mean, as a, as a language teacher, that's that's exactly right. And so I can immediately see how, you know, whatever my poor dabblings in composing music might be, the thought that I would have to put behind it is going to make me better able to absorb all the other stuff that is flying around in this class. Well, uh, for those of you who are watching, this is kind of our last chance to get any any, any questions or, or, or comments in for Mr. Daniels. Um, I wonder if you could kind of round us off uh, by giving us a, like a, a thumbnail uh, uh, blurb for, for this class. Maybe you could tell us um, in, in 30 seconds or a minute, why should my kid take this class? This class is, <clears throat> I, I want this class to be a very foundational class for understanding music, which is a unique part of the human experience and a unique part of worshiping and glorifying God. Um, this class is going to make you literate in music to know what makes up music and how you can produce it yourself. It's going to heighten your ability to analyze art in general because mm -hmm. music is so readily present to our understanding that if you reflect on your experience of the music enough, you're able to then put it into words um, more readily than you might with uh, even other forms of art, which are a bit more detached from you, like um, like the visual arts or, or acting, not to, to disparage those, but um, that's what I want my students to get out of, of the music theory course. Mm. Love it. Well, uh, Will Daniels is teaching music theory, analysis, and composition one for grades nine through 12 uh, this coming fall. It's a half credit of music, uh, which it's nicely into our diploma track. Uh, but diploma track or no, a, a, as, as, I, as I mentioned, so, you know, sort of a, a life-changing, life-enriching kind of class. Now, is there going to be a um, music theory, analysis, and composition two anytime soon? There will be, yes. This is certainly going to continue for those interested. Um, two and uh it could go on as 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 far as three and four uh depending on the interest that is shown in this class wonderful well thank you so much will thanks everybody for watching uh, so long